Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a airbrush review. We're looking at the Sagola X-Tech 400. Now I've moved a smart TV into the studio, basically for the YouTube videos and reviews so we can pull up websites. As I'm doing bits for you guys, I can pull up images. I can show you places where to get images from and things like that. So I pulled the website up that's got a Sagola on it. It just tells you a little bit of info. So this is a professional double action airbrush on a 0.3, it's a side feed. Uh, it has a 9cc side tank to use any amount of paint, but with the advantage of easy cleaning and color change, that's what it says. So we'll try that. Now, this brush has got one real bad flaw with it. It really has, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute when we're moving on the easel. But I'll give you a look at the brush now. It's a Segola X-Tech 400 03 double action airbrush. Now, if you've seen the Segola 4600 Extreme, I'll pop one up in the picture now. So that's the Segola 4600 Extreme. A brilliant spray gun, a workhorse, solid internals. Now you can see what they've done, they're bringing the rear dial, like what you get on the spray gun, across to the airbrush, and then they're sort of doing the same sort of colors and coming across into their airbrush range. So we'll move in on the easel. I'm gonna do my thinned out paint mix in it. We're gonna drop the pressure. We're just gonna see what this brush is like, and I will show you the very bad floor with this brush. Right guys, there's the brush sort of a little bit more up close so you can see it. You've got your sort of laser etching Segola logo, Spain, X-Tech 400 on the anodized back. You've got your adjuster here, so this will dial your trigger in for your paint flow. I always have these opened up so I've got full trigger movement. Trigger tops on these are very similar to some of the eye waters and the rich pens, the little round button top with the grip. Comfortable with a slope, very slight slope here. Now, what's the big flaw with this brush? It's made for right-handed people. How bad is that? You know, there's a lot of left-handed artists out there. So the minute I pick this brush up, I can't see where I'm going because this is blocking all my artwork. And we can't move this to the other side. If you've seen yesterday's video with the eye waters, you take the pin out and move it across. So if Segola would have made the body to move this, put it this side and put a blanking plate, it would have made this brush brilliant and I'd have like gave it a better review. But with it being completely blocking my view, it's a nightmare because you can't see where you're going. I have to sort of twist my body and lean this side to be able to paint over here. Or I have to try and do this and tilt the cup right down so I've got view. Now doing that, if that lid leaks, you're gonna get paint dripping out. It's it's a very bad mistake, I think, by Segola when they've done this. They should have had another pin here. But we will chuck some paint down it and I will paint with this brush so you get to see what it's like. Because if you are right-handed, because there's a lot of you out there, I think it's as lefties that there's not many of. So I'm gonna go for a thin mix with the FW isopropanol. We're gonna take the crown cap off. Now, one thing you have to look out for on these brushes as well, they're single taper needles. So single taper needle is a little bit more weaker. Now I've got the X-Tech 100, went to pinch and do a bit of tip dry, went like that and bent the needle. That's how soft these needles are. So you just gotta be really careful so that's 20 on the main line. We'll so do some dots. So it atomizes nice at 20. And getting down. It does get down. This is a 0, 03, remember. So this is getting down for a 0, 03. Then that little dot there, that's really small and going up to that size. You will get backing off full trigger, you'll get something like this. 
Atomize is nice, all soft on the outer. So I've got no dramas with that, the way it paints. It's just the view for me. So I'm having to sort of spray a little bit awkward. I'm gonna tilt the cup a bit. Getting down on a consistent line. No dramas, no breaks. Nice and clean. It does get down. So it sprays nice, atomizes and clean. No breaks in the uh, paint, but this paint is thin. So we're gonna drop the pressure down. Little dagger strokes. Now it's coping with the little dagger strokes. Probably come down a little bit more on that air. Tiny little dagger strokes. Quite clean. Dot me name down. So nice and clean, consistent, writing text. That text is around seven or eight mil high. We're gonna go for it smaller. So it's coped there, we can come down a little bit on that pressure and I'm gonna have to stick my glasses on because I can't see. That's better. I'll right, just give this a little clean. Just be really careful with your needles. It's a little bit spidery on this. A little bit, but we're down to like four mil. Yeah, that's about four mil on my name. So not bad for a zero three. I don't think I can, no, it just wants to, just can't get it. No, not as clean now, it's a little bit. It's gone down a little bit more there. Let's give it a little back bubble. Blast that through a bit. We'll try that again. No, it's just not. You're getting down to like four mil on writing. Cleanish there, going down to about three and a half mil. Nice, better here. So for your detail, it it gets down nice. Atomizes nice on the sort of fan dagger stroke. Clean, low pressure. This is around 10 PSI, probably just under. And it's atomizing still nice. Bring that pressure up. Give it a little clean. So straight down. So I can't knock it on what it can do detail wise. For a zero three, it's performing. It atomizes the paint nice. The trigger's nice, it's a little bit, but they usually are when they're like this, like noisy going down. But the actual moving back and how responsive the trigger is, is really good. Nice fine lines, clean, nice points. So the control of the paint with the trigger on and off 
is comfortable. Uh, long periods of time with this brush, not a drama, because it's a comfortable trigger. The body of the brush is nice. Your finger sits nice to these scallops here. On that scallop, when you put your finger in here, you sort of like, it's comfortable. It's rounded off on the body here, like the eye waters. So it's comfortable. Quite sort of heavy front-ended because you've got a big cup. This is quite weighty here. So you can feel the weight when you hold it because this is anodized aluminium at the back. So it's very light, very front nose end down. But once you've got it in your hand, it doesn't feel that weighty. It's only when you're holding it up, you can feel that front end tipping if you're holding it center. It just wants to lean it down a bit. Now, as I said, needles on these are soft, so be careful with your needles. You've got solvent proof front end here. The only one that I'd say isn't solvent proof, there is a little, when you take the side cup off, there's a black like O-ring that sits on this bar that comes across. I wouldn't say that is solvent proof. So just be careful of that one. Should be able to get spares for it though. And I would have thought you might even be able to get an upgrade on this O-ring here to a like a solvent proof one. But other than that, if you can put up with a big cup in the way as a left-handed sprayer, you'll get on with it. Price-wise, I mean, this. It, there's all different prices on this brush. The one that's on this website is saying 193 euros. Would I pay 193 euros for this brush? No, I wouldn't. Um, I really wouldn't. You get a better brush for the price than this. But if it is cheaper, hunting around on websites, I'd probably market this up at about mm, max 100 quid for a brush of this sort of light quality and what it can do. I wouldn't pay any more because I know there's better brushes. The one I used yesterday was an eye water. Yes, a little bit dearer, but blows this out of the water. That one I used last night for how precise it is. But it's getting the job done on a zero three. It, uh, it atomizes nice, as you can see, backing off. It lays the paint down nice. So that's my look at the Segola 46, I'm not thinking spray gun, the Segola X-Tech 400. So yeah, that's my look at the X-Tech 400 Segola, guys. Now, me personally, if you're after a Segola, buy a spray gun. The spray guns are awesome. I don't think um, they're in that sort of range for airbrush, I really don't. The X-Tech 100 that I used performed really well. There is a review on the channel. It performed really nice, comfortable brush, but just, pinching that needle and bending it was like, it was instantly, I had to stop. And it was like, it was a real shame because I liked the brush, but the needles are just not, not good enough. They're really not. And the design on that, being only a right-handed person can use it, is a bit bad really. It should have had that, the opposite side as well. So lefties, you're gonna struggle. It's just gonna be a nightmare. So pick another brush. Me personally, I would pick up, I'd spend a little bit more money because if that is 193 euros, I'd, I'd buy that and have the luxury of being able to move the cup to the opposite side and it is a better brush, 100% better brush that one is, really is. But that's my sort of thoughts on it, honest opinion. You've seen what it can do, it can get down and it can spray nice and it got down on uh, detail like the writing down to sort of like five mil clean and then we got down to sort of like three mil two mil on the writing and it was a little bit hit and miss but it did get down for a zero three so spraying capabilities I can't knock it trigger response is good trigger comfort is nice 
side feed on this is a nightmare. That's the only thing that lets this brush down is that and the needles are too soft. So soft needle and that is like, puts me off the brush. That's the only thing. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video on the Segola and hope you're sort of liking the new sort of style that I'm gonna be doing, incorporating access to website so we can pull stuff up, so we can look at images uh, when we're gonna come in and do step by steps. I will pull up sites where I'll find like the best prices for you. I'll show you some really cool sort of like airbrush sites so when you see the links in the description, you'll get to see a little bit of that website on the video, and then you can just go straight across to the links in the description, click over and have a look for yourself. It just gives you that sort of little bit more involvement in the video, so you get to see a little bit more and a bit more info for you guys. That's why I've done it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel and you're liking the content, click that subscribe, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, press the notification, then you'll get notified on the next video that's coming up. You'll get notified like a little bell, whatever it is on your phone that you use. It just lets you know when one of my videos is popping up. Likes, shares, it really does help the channel grow, guys. It really does. I'm trying to push across to sort of social media groups as well, sort of your airbrush forums, because it's a lot of this is for beginners. So getting you beginners up and running with products, reviews, step-by-steps, little tech videos and things like that, just so to get you genned up and on your journey and going along your journey the right way. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.